Welcome back to another exciting episode of Mass Effect Andromeda. Um, right now we're just doing some loading on the loading screen. Um, just, just, you know, just some loading. Rob Schneider is the toothpick. And now he's about to find out that being a toothpick is a prickly proposition. Coming this summer, rated PG. So, um, I apologize for this episode because it's in 480p. Yes, yes, the dastardly 480p. What is this, 2002? Well, I don't know why, but for some reason, um, not only did my system not, uh, not record the narration for this video... Uh, it also uh, would not let me record it in 1080p like I normally do it. It made me record it in 480p. I don't know what was going on with that. It was pretty weird. Um, luckily, it seems to be back to normal now. But unfortunately, it's too late for this particular video, which is uh, in 480p. So I apologize for that. But uh, next video, will be back to 1080p like nothing happened. Um, I am recording this voiceover after the fact because my initial voiceover was lost in the fire, so to speak. So, I'm just going to kind of follow along with this, try to give some insight into what I was, uh, what I was coping with mentally uh, as all this was happening. Alright, so here's a section that had me a little confused for a while. Um, could not figure out what to do next on this part. Um, and of course no walkthroughs exist for the game yet. Um, so what I had to do was I had to climb up some scaffolding and get on top of this giant uh, thing right here. Which leads to a uh, control panel I believe. Um, at the very least, it gives you a nice view. So even if this isn't what you're supposed to do, I mean, it's kind of cool up here. You got some some beam things going on. Uh, you can scan them. Um, I mean, your guess is as good as mine. This game is so vague with the objectives, and uh, it's really the the biggest problem with the game uh, when it comes down to it. Just the objectives are so vague, and you have so little information about what you're supposed to be doing at any given time. Um, I mean, your mileage may vary, um, but yeah, for my money, I, I had a lot of issues with the game just kind of plopping me in an area and being like, okay, find something to do, and I'm walking around going, but what? You know, like right here. Um, okay, so I guess I, I didn't have to climb the scaffolding, because I'm back on the ground now. Um, as you can see, doing a lot of running around in circles. Uh, this is probably my biggest pet peeve about uh, gaming. Um, you know, besides uh, besides those those Koreans who play the um, the uh, League of Legends and just like dominate everybody. You know, I, I've got some pretty serious beef with uh, with those those folks and. Uh, you know, I think maybe they should stop playing League of Legends and do something about that Kim Jong uh, Kim Jong Un. Um, but that's beside the point. You see, my biggest pet peeve in gaming, besides Korean League of Legends players, is running around in circles with no clue what I'm supposed to be doing. And this game forces you to do a lot of that, unfortunately. So here I am, just kind of like completely uh, confused. Like, am I, am I supposed to interact with these machines? Am I supposed to shoot them? You know, what What am I doing right now? Why are they up here if they don't serve any purpose? So, let's, uh, let's jump ahead and see if I ever find the solution to this. Uh, it's not even a puzzle, it's just, it's just tedium. That's all it is, it's, it's tedium. Um, this game really needed some some better checkpoints and you know it, it's funny that I say that because I've I've actually lambasted a few games in recent years for uh, hand holding 
just doing too much hand-holding of the player. Uh, like the Fable series, for instance, gives you like a literal golden trail of breadcrumbs uh, lighting your path, telling you exactly where you need to walk. It's like, go here, go there, go here, go there. And it's kind of appalling, actually, because it just completely robs you of any sense of exploration or discovery. Because you spend the entire game just following this golden uh, breadcrumb trail to the end of the game. And it, it's just, it's baffling to me. Um, so that's one extreme. That's like the far extreme of hand-holding. But then you've got uh, too little hand-holding, which can also be an issue. When you're, when you're dropped in a large open area um, with, with no clue what you're, what you're supposed to be doing. Sorry, I can't, can't English right now. Um, it, it just gets tedious and confusing very quickly. So that's what we see right now, just me running around. Finally, I come to the realization that I'm not actually supposed to do anything at that monolith. Um, it had me run up there, but then it actually moved the objective to a different monolith. So I have to go to a different monolith. So I was basically putzing around that monolith for five minutes for no reason. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to get to the next monolith over via some Dukes of Hazard style driving. Um, you could also play the Miami Vice theme for this driving section. Um, so here you can see the, the uh, monument that I was just climbing. It has some laser beams. Those laser beams actually point at two other monoliths and those are the places that you need to go to. So once you realize that, it all kind of clicks and you're like, okay, great. So all I have to do is get to those two monoliths and activate something and then we're good to go. Once you figure that out, it's good times. But unfortunately, yeah. I mean, the game does tell you in a vague way that you, know, you need to go to those places. It just doesn't give you any particular um, direction right off the bat. So it's like you're at the first monolith, and it's like you have to activate the other two beacons. And you look up, and there's like three giant stones. And you're thinking, okay, so I have to climb on top of these stones and activate the other two. And then you spend five minutes up there trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, it's not those stones. It's the very distant giant monoliths that you need to go and uh, putz around with in actuality. So, yeah. It's a little frustrating. Also, um, this is your all-terrain vehicle for the game. It's pretty cool. Um, it's It's got some weird controls, though. You have to press one of the left trigger buttons to switch it to all-terrain mode. Uh, and you have to do that a lot to climb hills. There. If it's in regular Spire mode, which has to be in regular mode to drive fast, you cannot climb a hill. So you have it in regular mode, you're driving around, you're having a good time, then you hit a hill, or even just a gentle slope, and all of a sudden you are at an impasse. You cannot climb that gentle slope, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much acceleration you build up. What you have to do is just hit that, uh, that left uh, trigger and uh, go into all-terrain mode. I think it's actually L1, but yeah, you go into all-terrain mode, and then you can climb the slope, and climb up that gentle slope, and then, then you can put it back into uh, regular driving mode, and pick up speed, and take off again, and do your thing. So yeah, interesting controls for the vehicle. Um, at the very least, it doesn't seem like it gets stuck anywhere, which I remember in Mass Effect 1, your vehicle could get stuck on all kinds of things. Um, so yeah, the vehicle controls in this are definite, uh, definitely better than they were back then. Uh, unlike the uh, faces and the animations for the faces, uh, a lot of these uh, facial animations, when, when the characters are talking, uh, actually resemble Ren from Ren and Stimpy. If you ever watched uh, Ren and Stimpy, uh, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, oh my god, it's been a long time. Holy shit. Um, so Ren had a very distinctively shaped head because he was, of course, the Chihuahua character. So 
when he would talk, his jaw would kind of go outward and taper a bit. He had this tapered uh, mouth that would like go out from his face while he spoke. And if you look, characters in this game do the same thing where they talk and their mouths actually kind of taper outwards uh, as they speak to one another. It's, it's a very peculiar sight, th this Ren effect. Uh, that's what I'm going to call it from now on, this, this, this Ren effect on the, uh, the faces. It's, it's just so weird to look at. And all I can think about is that cartoon chihuahua. Um, in any case, so we have arrived at another uh, giant uh, megalithic structure. And uh, now we just need to get this thing activated. Um, first, we got to fight off some, some uh, Skynet minions. Uh, I thought she was shooting at me for a second there. It was like, whoa. Um, is she a Judas? Was she a turncoat this whole time? Uh, no, no, probably not. Although, uh, there have been situations in the Mass Effect series where there were Judases in your midst. So it would not be the, it would not be the first instance of treachery in this, uh, this series. To say the least. All right. So that could come in handy. I'm just looking through a few things over here. Glad we've got support. All right. So what we have here is a Sudoku puzzle, but I have to find the runes first. Uh, which means running around blindly scanning until I find them. They are somewhere in this area. Who knows where? Um, I will probably jump ahead to finding them just to save us all some, uh, some time and energy. Um, this, this is a device that pops up frequently in this game where you'll have a control panel that you cannot interface with until you solve a Sudoku puzzle. But before you can take the Sudoku puzzle, uh, you need to find a couple of runes that are in the area. And what it'll do is it'll just kind of turn you loose and tell you, you know, find these runes. So you're running around with your scanner, scanning everything, trying to find the runes. As you can see here, I'm not having much luck. Um, and you cannot proceed. You cannot advance until you find those damn runes. Uh, needless to say, this can get pretty tedious, especially when it happens frequently, which it does happen frequently in this game. It reminds me of Metroid Other M. Um, Metroid Other M, one of the many bad game mechanics in that game, is that they would frequently bring the action to a halt um, and force you to scan your surroundings, scan the area that you're, or, that you're currently in, um, because there's some little object in the vicinity that the game expects you to find and scan. And oftentimes it's like a tiny, tiny little camouflaged like patch of dirt or something that doesn't stand out at all. And you're sitting there for five minutes just scanning everything in sight because you don't know what the hell you're looking for. And then finally, by dumb luck, you'll scan the thing that you need and it'll let you actually proceed with the game. That's what this feels like. And as you can see, I just found one of the runes, uh, more or less by, by blind luck. But uh, uh, pro tip, they're, they're generally up high, I've noticed. Um, the now the this. Metroid Prime games did a much better job with uh, scanning because scanning was never something that was forced on you like hey we're gonna completely stop the forward momentum of the game and we're gonna make you scan everything until you find the right uh, thing that you're supposed to scan and then you can proceed you know that never happens in the Metroid Prime games you can scan things at your leisure and get interesting information about your surroundings and very frequently, scanning things leads to hidden items. So you get rewarded for being curious about your environment and for investigating your environment. Metroid Prime does scanning right. Um, it's not like Other M where 
scanning is used as a device to halt your progress and just drag out the gameplay. Um, which was one of the many, many disappointments about that game. But regardless, what we have here is another game that is following a beloved series, just like Metroid Other M followed the beloved Prime uh, Trilogy. This game is following the beloved Mass Effect Trilogy. So it has a lot to live up to, and it has a lot of issues as well. So there's definitely a lot in common between this game and Metroid Other M, but that was, you know, that's a tangent regardless. Um, I'm just using the scanning uh, mechanics as a way to kind of point this out a little bit. Um, regardless, I'm still looking for that other rune. It's around here somewhere. Um, in the interest of uh, this not taking all day, let's let's just jump ahead to it, shall we? Actually, you know what? I don't think I need to jump ahead because I'm pretty sure it's right up here. Um, yeah, you have to run up this thing and then you have to jump across to a different one, I believe. No, no, you don't. It's actually it's right here. Sweet. Well, that that took long enough, but you know, it, I finally did it. Uh, I don't know what this thing is, but it's pretty menacing. All right, so. On that note, we've got the two runes, and now we can finally play Sudoku. And it's going to be just as awesome as it sounds. I mean, I've never played Sudoku before, so this is this is my first time. My first time ever uh, playing any kind of Sudoku. But I know how it works, because I've known enough people who uh, have liked it that I've heard about it. I know how it works. You can't, you can't repeat the same symbol multiple times in any row or column. You also can't repeat the same symbol inside of the individual quadrants, the, the squares, if you will. Uh, it sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. And that's even though it only gives you like, what, five symbols to work with, whereas in actual Sudoku, you have nine numbers to work with, I believe it might be 10. Uh, I think it's one to nine. Um, so yeah, you have more numbers to work with in Sudoku, which means more tiles as well. So maybe, maybe that is more complicated, but either way, in this particular situation, you have like five or six Interface symbles down. to work Top with, uh, it's four by four rows, uh, not too complicated. Um, looks like I'm, I'm being sassed by somebody here though. Hold on. Oh, that's, that's the thing about this though when you close out of the Sudoku without taking it, or if you fail at it, you get attacked by a bunch of enemies, which is very irritating and very unnecessary as well. They, they should have just given you a little breathing room to figure out what the hell you were doing. Because I imagine a lot of people playing this have no idea what a Sudoku is. You know, it's, it's very, very likely actually. So they, they should have thought about that and maybe giving people a little bit of breathing room, especially on this first puzzle. Just like give you a little space that you can figure out what the hell you're doing. Um, unfortunately, they didn't. So let's just hope I get it right this time. Uh, but yeah, this is Sudoku. Oh, <laughs> that was me pressing the wrong button. It's not that I don't understand what I'm doing, but the buttons are a little bit unintuitive. I know it says right there on the screen what to press, but they're still unintuitive. Um, it also it doesn't tell you like how to do the puzzle. There's no explanation like, oh, you have to press the uh, right and left triggers to select a symbol. So you, you go to select a symbol and you think, okay, I press the uh, cross button because that's what you press to select everything. Nope, that just solves the puzzle and since there's nothing on it you get attacked it's unintuitive at best in any case so what we've got here is uh right tr right and left triggers there you go and then you can place the runes just make sure that there's no overlap in any of the rows or columns or quadrants and once everything is placed correctly then you can press the button to move forward from there so that's pretty much it. 
It is indeed Sudoku. Um, this this might seem like uh, a fun little mini game, and it is, once you know what the hell you're doing. But here's the thing: this mini game appears all over the game. It's it's like the pipe uh, mini game in the original Bioshock. It's it's fun. It's uh, challenging. It, it makes your brain work a little bit. But at the same time, it pops up so frequently that you start to get kind of sick of it after a while. It's just like the go-to mini game for everything in the game, uh, which is worth noting. Um, yeah, I think this this looks good. No no discrepancies here that I can see. But it's good to it's good to take a a, a double uh, gander at it before you submit it. Just make sure everything's good, you know. You also got to remember to check those quadrants. You know, it's not just the rows and columns. It's also the squares. So at this point, I believe we're off to the third and final monolith on this desert planet. Um, I also recognize that I, I skipped over a little bit of footage between the end of part two and the beginning of this episode. Um, truth of the matter is I wasn't actually planning on recording any more of the game. I was just going to play it. Um, and just like not worry about recording or talking about it or anything like that. Just just play it, and uh, that was the idea anyway. Uh oh, am I trapped? Oh man! See, in a situation like this, you can activate all terrain mode and just kind of crawl over the rocks. There we go. So yeah, I ended up deciding um, after playing for you know, a few minutes on my own, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to get that many chances to record a playthrough of a game like this, like the day it comes out, you know, I'm not going to have many chances to do this, I mean, this game is out today, and I'm, I'm, I'm already uh, checking it out here, so... I figured it's as good time as any to get some recording, uh, get some recording in, um, post some videos. You know, it's it's just a golden opportunity to uh, do something that's very timely and uh, relevant, as opposed to my usual playing of games from you know years past. This is uh, going to be very timely, so I decided to just go ahead and uh, keep recording. And I guess I'll probably just record the whole uh, the whole game, the whole main story anyway. I'm not I'm not going to do all the side missions. I have no plans to go for 100%. Uh, I don't like that the game like that much, but perhaps in the future um, I'm going to have some patches behind it. But either way, I am going to play the main story, uh, which I imagine is not terribly long. Uh, Mass Effects usually don't have super long main stories. So, uh, yeah, I do plan to record the whole thing, and uh, it will uh, hopefully be an interesting series of videos. At least that's the hope. And uh, we shall see. I have to say that this planet is definitely uh, one of the nicer looking environments that I've seen in a video game lately. It's very impressive. I just wish that this video were in 1080p so that you could see it in its full uh, glory, really. Um, 480p is, is just not doing justice to how good this particular world looks. But like I said, uh, next episode will be back to 1080p. I have no idea what the deal is with this episode, why it did what it did, but Whatever the problem was, it's fixed now, and uh, we'll be back to normal next episode. Uh, also, I figured out how to equip my shotgun, as you can see. 
the reason that I couldn't equip my shotgun in the previous episodes is because, as far as I can tell, you can't equip the shotgun in the field. You can only change your equipment at uh, loadout machines that pop up, you know, in different areas, and by returning to your ship. So, as soon as I had a chance to actually alter my loadout, I switched the pistol out for the shotgun. So now I've got the shotgun and the machine gun. Um, I am going to primarily rely on the shotgun because I'm playing a vanguard here. And vanguards use charge and they use shockwave. Not shockwave, but like the, um, the move where they punch the ground and emit the uh, energy to knock enemies backward. So I'm going to be using that, I'm, I'm going to be using charge, and I'm going to be using uh, melee attacks in addition to the shotgun. Um, I don't think I'm going to be making much use of the machine gun, uh, even though I like the cool laser effect that's got going on. Um, but I'm keeping it equipped regardless, uh, in case I need some distance firepower. I might replace it with a sniper rifle at some point, don't know yet. Um, I don't expect to use it very often though. I'll only use it when I need that that range uh, range attack. For the most part though, I plan to just use the shotgun on enemies. The shotgun is the weapon that I'm going to be upgrading as well. I'm not really going to upgrade the machine gun at all. Just the shotgun. The shotgun and my go-to moves. So right now we have another situation where I'm running around in circles because the game is not very clear about what you need to do. There are generators that need to be shut down to disable the shield, but those generators are all over the place, and it doesn't tell you how many of them are left or anything like that. So you're just kind of blindly running around shutting down generators, and then going and checking to see if the shield is down yet, because you don't know. You don't know how many there are. I thought there would be like two or three, you know? So we're gonna just jump ahead a little bit. I think there are like five or six generators. Uh, they're all in the immediate vicinity around this uh, shielded room, though. So if you just run around the uh, uh, circumference of this little base right here, you should be able to find all the generators and shut them down. They all look like this. This is, uh, this is a generator. And they're all on these little uh, bridgey things. You just need to find them. One of them you have to actually jump over the shielded room to get to. So uh, be sure to jump up on the roof see what's happening up there let's get to it before there's any more cat Drac, stop that. Vetra, what are you doing here? I'm with the Pathfinder. That Pathfinder. A friend of Vetra's a friend of mine. My name's Sarah Ryder. I'm Drac, Clan Nackmore. You'll forgive me if I didn't just trust a stranger from the Nexus. They haven't exactly treated us Krogan well. What are you doing out here? Alright, well that does it for another exciting episode of Mass Effect Andromeda. Join me uh, next time for part 4, and it's going to be just as exciting as this one, uh, and higher resolution to boot. And uh, we'll find out what the deal is with this uh, Drax guy over here. Um, Alright, yeah, like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.